What's up game players? How are you guys doing? I'd like to welcome you guys to the Analog Circle Podcast episode number 35. I'm your host Keon Mitchell and listen to me when I tell you. I want to truly thank you for tuning in to another episode. That's right, another one of the Analog Circle Podcast. Now, if you want to reach the show... You can feel free to call in at 443-261-4607 to voice your opinion. You tell me how you feel about a certain situation and it will get played on the podcast. I don't dodge anything. Or if you want to get in contact with the show by email, you can feel free to email the show at the analog circle podcast at gmail.com. Woo, man, it was a lot going on this week. If you guys haven't heard it already, then maybe you should check out the, uh, my, my, my reaction to the Sony show. Well, well, I guess the uh, presser, the press briefing that took place in New York City. Now, you can find that over, as well as the podcast. You can find it over on Stitcher, iTunes, Audio Mac, and uh, wherever else. I don't even know. I don't care because it ain't about that. Um, But if you want to, you can also feel free to join the Facebook group. It is just called The Analog Circle. If you want to, come on by. If not, hey. I understand. Man, let me tell you something, buddy. Just jumping right into it. What have I been playing? What have I been into this week? Well, I tell you, man, listen to me. I have been playing a little bit more of the God of War remaster. And man, let me tell you something, buddy. Okay, from me to you, this game is remarkable. I've been having nothing but a fantastic time with this game. I know I am, man, I gotta be closing in on the end of this game. And let me tell you something, for a game that I thought was going to be pretty much like Dynasty Warriors. You know, a whole lot of doing the same thing, not doing anything differently. Man, I got to take all of those thoughts back, brother. I played this game, and I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes, I am late to the party. I know. I know I am. Man, I know I am. But goodness gracious, better late than Y- y'all know it. Y'all, y'all know the rest. But anyway, getting past all of that, you know, it's a great game. Had a good time. But I don't even want to dwell on that anymore. I just want to jump into what we all come here for. And you know what that is, folks. That's for the gaming news. That's right. That went down. We're going to start out with good old Sony. Oh, Sony. Man, you guys. Sony. You know, let me do, you know what, let me tell you guys something really quickly, okay? I want to let you guys know that when I saw that press, okay, that press event, you know, talking about the release of the PlayStation Slim and the PlayStation 4K, I was excited, man. I was pretty doggone excited. Let me tell you guys something, man. When they were showing the visuals of the 4K, Okay, you know, showing the, 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 uh, the, uh, the Spider-Man mask, and it looked like you could see the fabric on the doggone mask. I gotta tell you guys, man, you know, I took, I took a step back. I had to step back and really think about what I said, and man, let me tell you something. Everybody knows I don't have a 4K TV. That's just not something I have right now. I can't tell you if I could tell the difference or not to tell you if I could see a really big difference in the in the doggone quality of what they showed. But I will say this, man. I will say that 
It looks like it could be promising, and I'm looking forward to it. But let's just, I just wanted to put that out there. I can't say I saw a big, huge difference. It kind of looked the same. But if I see it on a 4K monitor, or you guys tell me if you got a 4K TV, tell me if you saw the difference. Please, somebody chime in. Help me. Get me out the dark. But let's get into this Sony news, okay? Now, earlier this week, Sony announced that no mod support will come to Fallout 4 and Skyrim Remastered for the PlayStation 4. Wait a second, hold on, let that sink in for a second. Okay, moving on. Sony said that they would not approve user mods the way they should work, where users can do whatever they want for either version. Now, as of now, Sony has not given a reason as to why this decision was made. However, back in June, Bethesda reported that they were struggling, listen, struggling, to work around the PlayStation 4 proprietary sound format and the fact that Sony has, now listen to this, everybody knows this. Now, the thing is, is Sony has a 900 megabyte MB, not a gig, brother, not a GB, but a MB, 900 megabyte limit for mod storage. Now, now to me, you know what this says to me, brother? You know what this says to me, brother? It will be interesting to see what version of Skyrim of the Skyrim remaster game. It'll be interesting to me to see who will gravitate to this game on what console. Now, we can we can debate all day. You know about, you know the consoles have never had mod support. Why should it really matter now? Why would that really be a make or break decision? For someone to say, hey, I'm going to get it over here or I'm going to get it over there just because of mods. And I got an answer for you. The reason why is because the console can have mods now. That's the whole point. People have been talking about it for years on the PC side. Us game players, us mere mortals, okay, on the console side of things have not been able to get this on a console. So if you tell someone who wants to experience this, who has both consoles or has one of the consoles that can do this, which meaning it'll have to be an Xbox One at this point in time, I'm really thinking that someone that really wants to get that that extra content, you know, that extra meat on the bones of the game, they're gonna gravitate over to the Xbox One. I don't know. You guys know what to do if you want to tell me how you feel. You can do that. But to me, I think that a person would go over to where they can get more value. Case in point, we have Destiny, okay? Sony has the deal with Destiny. They get the extra perks a little earlier than guys do on the Xbox side. So what happened? What happened? The same thing that always happens, brother. They went on over to the PlayStation side. If they were very hardcore about the game, and they stayed over there. So we'll see how this unfolds. Me, I think that uh, Sony, they have their reasons behind why they can't get these mods at this point in time. It could definitely well be. The fact that they have this 900 megabyte, which is mind-blowing in 2006, the team. Did you have a 900 megabyte cap for mods? But hey, maybe it was something they weren't ready for. I don't know. But that's what's happening. Moving on to the next story. Now, they anticipated Castlevania's successor. You guys might have heard of it. It's called Bloodstained. 
Yes, it's actually being developed by Mr. Koji Igarashi. The former Konami developer has been delayed. Okay, this uh, actually he said, I'm sorry, I read that all wrong, my bad. But uh, basically, the uh, former developer of Castlevania over there at Konami, he says that the game has been delayed until the first half of 2018. So not 17, brother. Oh, no. 2018 is the time and the place that this will be coming out. So we have to wait a year and basically a little more than, mm, a little less than a year and a half, but quite a long ways out. Now, this is the reasoning. Now, according to an update video, Koji, he said, I've realized that at this rate, the game may not end up meeting my quality standards. I've decided to add a new development team to the main production and improve our approach so that we can keep the game fully on track for how I envision it. That vision is to replicate the look and feel of the Castlevania games that fans have dubbed Metroidvania and will focus on exploration and equipment than the more action-oriented linear original games. So here you have a legend. Okay, make no mistake about it. Mr. Koji Igarashi is a legend. Okay, he's behind Castlevania. He made that franchise what it is. This gentleman said, hey, look, we're going to have to take a time out here. We're going to have to go ahead and go back to the drawing board. If you guys can just work with us, 2018, mark my words, it will be released. And we want to release it then because I want to get my vision out there i want the game to live up to what you guys are expecting for it to be so me personally i wasn't really checking for this game bloodstain i know a lot of castlevania fans were looking to this game to actually get that that taste that feel that sense of where castlevania used to be in its past trying to get that feeling back that nostalgic feeling you know i understand that a lot of people are looking forward to this game but i have to respect mr igarashi's wishes that he would rather wait go ahead bite the bullet on this and give the fans of this genre, this Metroidvania genre, the game that they are looking for and not let the fans down like uh, someone else did with another knockoff game, Mighty Number no. 9, you know. He doesn't want to go down that road, folks, and I don't blame him. So we'll have to see what happens. I think that, I, nev I never think that the lays are bad. I don't think anybody should think they're bad. Yes, they're a little disheartening, especially when it's a game you're looking forward to. But if that means, if that delay means that they're going to get the game right, they're going to give you the product that you were wishing and hoping for, then in the long run, it's definitely worth it in my opinion. But moving on to the next story. Now, now this just continues. Okay, this 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 Nintendo train just keeps choo choo chewing along. Now, more speculation is coming out about the NX. Yes, from more analysts reporting to the Wall Street Journal that they expect Nintendo to release NX details by early October, which would give Nintendo around a five month campaign window i guess to tell why we should buy the console now the rumors continue to state that the console will be a tablet style console that you can take on the go or hook up to your tv when you're home now see to me 
analysts, of course, nothing is in stone, ladies and gentlemen. You know, this is all speculation. But I would hope, I would sincerely hope that Nintendo is thinking, at least thinking in their mind, like, okay, buddy, we need to get the ball moving. We need to get it rolling. Because you're talking about a March of 2017 release, okay? You already have the PlayStation Pro that's going up against you. Even though Nintendo keeps claiming we're not competing with those guys, we're staying in our own lane. Hey, we're staying in our corner. We're not doing that. That does not matter, because if competition is on the block, competition is on the block. I don't care if you're sitting on your stoop. If you're in the same game, you are competition. So I'm thinking that Nintendo, more than likely, of course, I don't know. Nobody knows what the specs are under the hood of this machine. But I'm suspecting that just like classic Nintendo, it's not going to be a powerhouse. And it doesn't necessarily have to be to be able to compete. All Nintendo needs to do at this point in the game is start dropping some kind of hints. Start telling us about what we can expect. We already know that it's going to be a, a Metroid. Not, not a Metroid. Whoa, let me take that back. Woo! Um, it's going to be a Zelda, and it's going to be a Mario, and it's going to be another AAA title at the beginning of this life cycle of this console, which is something that Nintendo has hardly ever done. If any, from back in the day, maybe back in the Nintendo, Super Nintendo days, maybe, but no, those games you usually have to wait for the triple A's, but they're saying that they're going to be in the forefront of the release of this console. So what I'm saying is they need to get out there. They need to start campaigning. They need to start getting us, the game players, involved with what's going on, what is the vision, where is Nintendo going, is it going to be a tablet, is it going to be a regular controller, will it hook up to the TV and you can take it on the go and play the same exact games that you would be playing on it if you were in the house versus on the bus, we need to find this stuff out, a price something nintendo you really have to get on the ball you got five months five months to get out here and tell us once again and i know i'm repeating myself but why we should jump on board some people feel like they've been burned one too many times from nintendo the the wii u to me it burned a lot of Nintendo fans. It's no other games coming out this year. Star Fox was lackluster to say the best. It was lackluster at its best. And that's the only game you have for this year for the NX. The real only major game. Nintendo, you got a lot of making up to do to your fans. And trying to get guys like me back into the fold who want to see you win. I want to see Nintendo win, but I just need to know that Nintendo was going to do something to bring me back in and let me know that they're not going to go back to their old ways. You know, are they going to have a network where you don't have to put in a passcode and all of that stuff? I understand you want to take care of the kids, you want to make sure they're fine, but I think you could have a tear. That's solely based on adult use. You know, they just need to get a little better with that. But I'm rambling on. But this is all speculation. October will be coming up. That's for dog on shore in a couple of weeks. And we'll see what Nintendo releases in October. Now, moving on. In Microsoft news, now, this was very interesting. I'm going to tell you that right now. This perked my ears up. Now, in Microsoft News, once again, a NES, yes, a Nintendo Entertainment System emulator entitled NES Box, NES Box, has passed certification. Oh, what? Yes, it passed certification and will appear in the Windows Store for, get this, take a breath, for Xbox One. 
soon it's going to be available it's an app now i want to let you guys know this though nest box isn't purely for playing emulated versions of nintendo's back catalog now it can actually you know this app it can actually be used to make games now according to this is a itch dot io page there are built-in tools for development code sprites maps sound editors and the command line um which is enough to create a mini retro game now once again i, I, I want to stress this just in case some authorities are listening um i want to let you guys know this uh loading up a usb with NES games and playing them on your Xbox One is illegal. Please know that. And Nintendo has a long fact about the use of ROMs to play their games. Now, if you guys are interested in this, you can actually visit the website, get all of the information you need. If you're thinking about game development in the 8 bit style to start out very, very basic level definitely go over here and check these guys out the website is nestbox.com I, I i think it's cool i mean I, I went to the website you can see that um they actually have the green lights on the different devices that it's available for it had android up there they're ready for that as well as uh, uh windows 10 and xbox one so it actually is real but to get like i said more information on this once again if you're thinking about getting into game development creation or whatever want to get your feet wet check them out man it, it looks pretty cool but uh moving on to the next story now one of the big enough like i said sony was real busy brother now one of the announcements um oh shoot i jumped ahead god dog it uh, i'm gonna have to retract that but uh one of the bigger well forget it i'm gonna make it blend in look how i make it work man no i'm not i botched that but um it was an apple event that was uh that was pretty big this week where um they announced a pretty big and interesting announcement everybody knows what i'm about to say yes they announced that super mario run will be available on the iphone now you guys might be wondering like me you might be wondering why did this happen now of course of course the logical answer is always money absolutely i would agree with that but in an interview with the verge mr miyamoto said that the inspiration to bring the console game to ios was drawn by observing people around him he went on to say his wife is a perfect example when i give her and this is i'm quoting him right now he says when i give her video games or game systems she doesn't play a whole lot but i watch her on her smartphone and she does a lot of those types of things on her smartphone now the game will release in december on ios he said this but he also said the game will eventually come to android now he didn't actually give a day at a time or whatever but he did say android users don't worry you won't be left out so stay tuned for that now now as far as the game's controls go the primary button is you know a jump button you know you tap it and the longer you hold on to that jump button the higher mario jumps now miyamoto also said he also considered the fact that people are increasingly becoming addicted to smartphones and listen to this this was another uh analyst going in about this game now we know with pokemon go dead okay it really went go 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 to the stars it really made nintendo a boatload of money in a short period of time now analysts are actually saying man okay they're saying that this game is going to get it's going to hit 1.5 billion 
downloads for this game 1.5 billion now this game it is worth me telling you guys this is basically an endless runner ad mario that's it with a jump button okay that is all and do you mean to tell me one and a half billion people are going to download this. I have to believe that this will not be a free game. This is a licensed character. I can't see Nintendo just giving it away for free. So that means even if, listen to this, man, even if they sold this at the cheap price of one dollar, if this is true, if these analyst numbers are true, do the math. It's basic math. That means they're going to make $1.5 billion. You know, you turn that into two, you're going to get $3 billion off of a mobile game. Now, if the mobile market is this strong, brother, I have to think that Nintendo really has to be considering going that route. Maybe not making everything the exact same as the 3DS or their, you know, future handheld device. But I really think that Nintendo will start doing a lot of spinoffs. If it's going to get them this kind of revenue, this kind of money, man, I say do what you got to do. That's what I say. I don't know uh, 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 why that would be such a bad thing. I think that Nintendo, they need to do something they know that the smartphone and the tablet are on their heels, man. So the, I think this is just a reaction. Everybody knew eventually this was going to happen. We just didn't know when. So December, this will be out. I will be very interested to see what the numbers actually add up to with Nintendo and this future Super Mario Run game. Moving on back to good old Sony Kens. Yes, I don't know why the heck I said that. That just didn't even feel right, me saying that. I don't know what happened with that. But uh, going back to Sony, the event in New York City, I'm still tripping off. I can't get over that. Uh, just X that out of your, um, yeah. Anyway, getting to that. New York event that Sony had. Now, Sony announced that it was going to be patches for games. They would be available for certain games that would actually support 4K and HDR upscale. Well, come to find out, it was some talk. Oh, it was some talk, brother, about these patches possibly costing me and you money. Okay, now, it was actually an interview that was conducted by website Game Impress Watch. I'm sorry, let me re-say that. The website name is Game Impress Watch. Now, they asked Mr. Man, here we go, I don't want to botch his name. Mr. Masaya, oh shoot, Masayasu. Ito, I hope I said it right. Let me let me just spell it out. M A S A Y A S U, Masayasu Ito I T O. Anyway, who is an executive vice president at Sony Interactive? Now, what the, the blah, blah blah blah. Man, I'm all messed up. Okay, now the question was asked: Would 4K and HDR patches be free? His response was, it will be different for each title, depending on the thinking of each licensee, which he referred to was a third party. That was talking about third party. Now, when he was asked about, of course, games that were going to be published by Sony, Mr. Ito's response was, I think it will vary for each one of our titles. Now, two of the, those titles that will get these updates will be Un Uncharted 4, which is going to release on November 10th, as well as Infamous First Light. That's going to release on November 10th as well. They will be getting the patches. Now, at the time 
the only game to be getting a PS4 K, I mean, PS4 Pro patch for free was the Elder Scroll Online. But this was an interview that was conducted by Kotaku, and they had to translate it. So basically, all of this information, I just found this out, I mean, like right before this, um, it actually definitely was lost in translation. What happened was, since they were doing that, you know, having to translate the the language that was not true it was said wrong the uh actually the playstation 4 pro patches will be free just like any other post release patch so if you were like myself who once I, I read this story i started jotting it down and writing it but right before i got on i wanted to you know let you guys know oh shucks yeah it actually will be free so It'll be free. You guys can look forward to it. Once again, um, I think that's great. You know, if they're going to do it like that, they're going to make sure that it's just like a regular patch or update. Bam, you get it for free. That's pretty good. That's pretty dope on Sony's side, man. Not to have you actually have to pay for that extra resolution. But moving on. I botched that one. My bad, y'all. But moving on. Sony. It's more Sony news. Sony was deep. Sony has officially dropped the price of the PlayStation 4 to $299 before the Slim is officially released, which is going to be, I believe, September 15th. I knew this had to happen. It had to happen, bro. Because when you have the Xbox One S, now we know that the S, he's a long second, okay? He's a distant second place. But when you get a system that's offering you a 4K Blu-ray player built inside for $299, and then you have a console that does not have that, does not support any 4K native resolution at all, and you want 350 what was it, 400 I think, I don't know if it dropped down to 350 I think it did, $350? versus 300 you gotta drop it even if you are the leader in the doggone clubhouse you gotta drop it to stay competitive so just to let you guys know some of the deals that are going on you can actually go to best buy right now and you can get a call of duty black ops 3 bundle for 299 now i i wanna i wanna preference that by saying i do not think at all that it is the actual call of duty 3 console itself that they're selling for that price but i believe it's going to be like the one that i got where it came in the box it was a physical copy it was the call of duty 3 black ops joint came with it it was a great value i loved it still love it but um outside of that you can also at gamestop you can get, now this was a good one. You can get the Uncharted 4 bundle for $2.99. Now the only Uncharted bundle I remember was the one that was the bluish color that had Nathan Drake on the front of the PlayStation 3. If you can get that for $300, that is a doggone steal. I'm tempted to get it just because it's a limited release and not even open it. I'm really, really tempted, but I don't know. That would that would just be irresponsible, right? Wouldn't it? I don't know. I don't know. But um, outside of that, you can also pick up as well uh, as like at Best Buy. You can pick up Black Ops 3, the bundle for $2.99 as well. So right now it's officially happened. Sony is definitely competing. Holiday season is coming up very, very soon. To me, September is the beginning of the holiday season because, you know, it's getting ready to start changing. The weather's going to change. October's coming and that's when it's on, you know. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how this works out. Um, but uh, moving on. Man, that's just good news. But moving on now, for you guys still playing Gears of War Ultimate Edition. Now, 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 listen to this, buddy. You will be happy to know that permanent XP boost has been added to all playlists except Assassination. 
That's the only one. But they are now permanently doubled XP for their previous values. Now, Assassination will offer four times the XP permanently. So whether you guys are playing and you're just doing your thing on a regular day, on a regular day, you will be able to get daggone XP boost no matter what the day. It's not going to be a special week or anything like that. And if you're playing assassination mode, you're going to get four times the XP. Now, this is permanent, so you don't have to be in a rush. This is not changing. This is what it is. So any of you Gears of War Ultimate Edition players, just know your XP is about to go way up. Just know that. Also, just to let you guys know this, just as a side note, starting on September 28th to October 5th, they're going to be having a week-long double XP event. Now, this is the thing. This actually means those double XPs, those double XP points, will actually be quadruple XP during that week. So, September 28th to October 5th, if you're really trying to rack up some XP, you're going to do just fine because once again, it's going to be quadruple. Man, I say go ahead and go for it. I can't do it. The game just didn't age that well to me, but that's just me. Moving on. And in in, 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 in just a short story. Now, EA Access members, if you are an EA Access member, hello and greetings to you. You will actually be able to download NHL 2017 right now to see if the game is worth your hard-earned money. So get on out there, EA Access members, and download NHL 2017 because your dog on shore can't download Titanfall too early. Oh, oh, that hurts. That hurts. You know, a lot of people are mad at Sony, saying, oh, it's because of Sony, we can't get the game early. Listen, man, listen, calm down. Calm down. It's a business. This this round, they've decided to go with Sony. Sony is the leader. Of course, this happened during, uh, what was it, Battlefront? Was it Battlefront that came out? Uh, the Star Wars game, Battlefront, it came out on both. They had to deal with Sony, but the game still came out a week early on the Xbox One EA Access. I'm sure they were pretty hot about that. So I'm sure they just said, hey, look, look, whoa, 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 no funny business, pal. Okay, no funny business. This time, when you release the game, you release it together. Okay, you release it when you release higher copy. Okay, our version. So, I mean, it happens, man. It's, it's all about the business. It's all about the money. It's all about revenue, which is money as well. So, I mean, you know, hey, it is what it is, man. But EA Access NHL 2017, get on on there and see how you feel about it, man. Moving on. Good grief. Now, NA, man, you know what? This blew my wig back. Okay, I want you guys to know that this really blew my wig back. Now, in a shocking turn of events, I didn't see this stuff coming. The Xbox One has been the number one selling console for August, according to the NPD numbers, which to my knowledge... To my knowledge, it's the first time that Microsoft has been able to beat Sony two months in a row this whole generation. Talking about going on three years, man. A three-year stretch. I think, what, November? Will, will uh, be three years that the consoles have been, been out? Man, it's been almost a three-year stretch that Sony has just been dominating. Microsoft might get one month. And that's it. Next thing you know, nine months later, they might get one month. This is the first, man. They got two back-to-back -back wins. This is amazing. Now, a lot of people, you know, you know how fanboys are, okay? I can't stand y'all, man. 
I can't. You know, they 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 want to throw. It, it, now, now I, I, I want to preference this real quick by saying that it is nothing wrong with having a preference. Man, I just said that, but y'all y'all know what I'm saying. There's nothing wrong with having a preference, a console that you rock out with. It is no doubt, okay, that I rock out with Xbox. That is my system of choice. That's what I go with. But at the same time, I have a PlayStation 4, and I'm a fan of games, of gaming itself first. It's these guys that I have a problem with. Where, okay, Microsoft wins, okay? They won. NPDs, okay? You got guys that'll come out the woodwork. Well, guess what? It was only for America, okay? It wasn't for the rest of the globe. It was for America. I'm saying to myself, hey, look, man, come, you know, take, take a breather, okay? Basically, all it's saying, okay, is they won in America, but they want to take it away like it doesn't exist, we all know that Sony is dominant in pretty much every single area. Okay, it's no way Microsoft is going to go over to Japan and sweep Sony. It's never going to happen. Okay, over in China, whatever. It's not going to happen. Microsoft just does not have the same territorial pull as Sony does. Sony can go anywhere. Okay, they can go anywhere and they will excel. Microsoft, their market is limited. Okay, now people can say, well, that's not, you know, that's not their fault. You know, that's not Sony's fault that they're beating them world, worldwide. It's true, but we're talking about NPDs, okay? NPDs are strictly, as far as I know, over here for the states okay so there's no way you can go in there and start trying to add stuff to the conversation that's not even in the conversation man you would think these people got stock in doggone sony let me tell you something buddy okay my allegiance as far as gaming goes i will say it again it is to whatever game appeals to me i will never bash another company and wish that another company goes out of business because of whatever your reason is you can say they're ripping me off that's always the that's always the main thing that people say they feel like they're getting ripped off okay they feel like they're trying to rob you for every dime it's not the case these people gotta eat just like you gotta work and eat they gotta work and eat now i understand that some people can say, well, yeah, I get that, but don't try to rob me in the process. Guess what? They're not holding a gun to your head, okay? They're not making you. So, all of you fanboys, please just relax. Take it all in. Sony's been winning the whole time, okay? Two months is not gonna break Sony down. All right, relax. Microsoft got two up on them. Good grief, man. People going freaking ballistic out here. Moving on. Good gracious. To the next story, buddy. Shoot. Star Trek Online has arrived for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One for free. That's right. For free. Now, Star Trek Online, if you weren't aware, it's an MMORPG. And uh, these console versions will bring both legacy of romulus and delta rising expansions as well as numerous gameplay updates so if any of you guys are out there that are star trek fans and have seen this game on pc i believe it's been available on pc for around six years now it's been out there for quite a while you guys can jump on here for free check out the game once again on the playstation 4 and the xbox one and see how you like it man you just might enjoy it moving on to the next story now the original bayonetta that's right bayonetta the original is backwards compatible for the xbox one and you can buy it digitally for 19.99 so any of you Bayonetta fans that want to play, hey, if you got the disc, plop, just, just pop it on in to the Xbox One and enjoy the game. Moving on now for you ladies and gentlemen. Yes, 
that are anticipating Forza 3 and can't wait to take it for a spin while starting today. That's right, I'm recording this on Sunday. By the way, the Ravens won. I'm feeling great about myself. Even though I don't know what the future is going to hold. I wasn't very confident in the team today. I must be uh, honest with you. But uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, if you just can't wait. It's going to be a demo release, like I said, today on Sunday. Which is uh, which is going to um, hold you over, I guess. Give you a little bit of time to get acclimated with the controls. See if the game is really as beautiful as it looked on the xbox stage at e3 see if you can do that half flip joint you know that was on there with the doom buggy thing i hope that's on there man that would be so dope if they had the daggone doom buggy on there where it do that little little flip thing on it that would be nice but you know just uh look for it it should be up today which is sunday if it's not up today which by the time you hear this it'll be the next day but uh definitely check out for it man it should be really really cool i'm looking forward to it myself but um the game if you weren't aware the game will be released on september 27th now the, the next story is for you pc game players now you may or may not have been aware this was interesting too you guys might not have been aware of it but blizzard was working on a point and click game entitled adventures lord of the clans back in the 1990s back in the early mid 90s but at that time it was actually canceled they worked on it until it was canceled well listen to this man listen after 18 years of just being dormant totally silent the project recently resurfaced again when a user named uh, Raydor, Raydor located, this guy actually lives in Mazarasha. He lives in Russia, posted a download link for the game in the Scrolls of Lore forum a few days ago. Now the game size, if you are interested in getting this, the game size is 500 whopping megabytes. <laughs> it's 500 megabytes. My goodness, our games are freaking grown. But um, if you want to check it out, I would highly recommend jump on there as soon as you can before Blizzard takes it down i mean it, it's amazing how these people just get these codes these source codes and actually put it up bam download it it's up you know so it looked very interesting it looked um you know if you guys are fans or, or ever played on the pc back in the mid to late 90s you know, it's that kind of aesthetic to it. It looks really cool, man. I mean, that was the era I was PC gaming in, and it looks really, really cool. So I'm, I'm sure that even if you have a low-end uh, laptop or PC, you should have no problems running a game from the 90s, early to mid-90s on a present-day PC. So even guys that might not necessarily be PC gamers, I would recommend just go over there and check it out, download it, you know, and get a piece of history that was almost totally erased. So, you know, that's about it for that. But moving on to the next story now, Rise of the Tomb Raider on the PlayStation 4 Pro. If you guys might not know, some of you guys probably do, but it will give you more options on how to run the game. It's going to be three different ways to be exact. Now, I'm going to run through them for you real quick. Now, the first is 4K resolution mode, which targets 30 frames per second and runs at 4K resolution. Now, second is the enriched visuals mode, which caps the frame rate at 30 frames per second, but pairs it with a 1080p resolution. Now, third, there's high frame mode, which targets 60 frames per second at 1080p resolution. Now, it's worth noting that Crystal Dynamics did say that the high frame rate mode may not always reach the target 60 frames per second. 
but frame rate should be north of around 45 frames per second. So they're actually putting out basically a disclaimer so that they don't get a doggone case for false advertisement. I, I've really been noticing that, you know, these developers and publishers have been covering their tushes, you know, making sure that they are, you know, totally in the clear of any cases. But this actually made me question a couple of things, y'all. I, As I was reading these specs, well, not even specs necessarily, just, you know, what the console would be able to do depending on what mode you have it set in. The first thing I thought about was the 4K resolution mode, which is going to target the 30 frames per second, but you'll get the 4K resolution. Now, I don't know necessarily if that's going to be native or not. I don't know. I'm taking it that it, I don't think it will be, but we'll see. I don't know yet. But that made me question what uh, the guy said on the Sony stage during their conference as far as the, or I should say press, well, press con, same thing, but where he talked about Call of Duty actually running at 60 frames per second in 4K. Now, if Tomb Raider, of course I understand that Tomb Raider is not a first-person shooter. You don't necessarily need that kind of speed the frames per second but i but i have told you guys since i played quantum break and how that game it was a good game but the frame rate i just did not like it and how i was saying the 30 frames per second they say that's the the uh cinematic experience and all of that it makes it more immersive man forget that if you got a game that's running like quantum break Man, scratch that. If you can get it to 60, get it to 60. But, you know, Tomb Raider, I say, hey, if you can get it to the 60, do it. But it looks like that at this point in time, if you're going for that high 4K resolution, that you're only going to get 30 frames out of it. So I don't know if Call of Duty is going to be able to do that in native 4K. That's the only question that I have. And like they said, it may not always even hit it. You know, even when you're targeting just getting your frames per second up to 60 frames per second, it's possible that it could drop down to 45. So we'll see how it goes. A lot of people have been real hard on Sony and saying how the PlayStation 4 Pro is a waste of money. They don't see the, the real need for it and how it doesn't have a 4K Blu-ray player built in. The 4K Blu-ray player, I can... I can understand that. I can because as a, as a truck driver, I go around to all kinds of different cities, different towns, and, and, and you'd be shocked, man. Once you get out there and you really see where people live and what the internet is like out there in these small towns, man, it is a daggone eye opener, man. You know, not everybody has fast internet like you do in the city like here in baltimore or you know in new york or in pennsylvania even in pennsylvania it's certain parts that they don't have you know fast internet and pa you know so it's it's one of those things where i can understand that sony probably didn't put the 4k blu-ray player in because it might have possibly hiked up the price a little bit more and they wanted to keep the price down so their their answer was to actually have 4k you know you'd be able to actually stream it on netflix but then the problem comes in if you don't have the internet to actually support being able to go on netflix and not have it buffering the whole doggone time and not being able to enjoy your device at 4k versus the xbox one s you get the disc you pop it in and you can play it you know so i understand that you know that that's a drawback people weren't really feeling that they were a little upset about that especially since sony owns or at least is a partner with others that own the technology, the Blu-ray technology, you know, people are like, ah, that's a deal breaker for me, for me. So I can understand that. But to say that the console is a waste of money, you know, that, that, that depends on perception. You know, it depends on if a person hasn't picked the PlayStation 4 up yet, 
or if you know they were just waiting for the right time to jump in i think four hundred dollars for what it can do true is not gonna be a scorpion i mean and that's already been proven that's that's not me jumping the gun they have said that it's not going to compete it's not going to be able to compete with the scorpio that's not going to happen so you know people are you know down on them but i think that overall what sony is doing is good might not be for everybody but it's really no need of bashing it and making it seem like it's the worst thing that's ever come out but we'll see how it goes though man we'll see we'll see but moving on to the next story you guys might not know this and god dog it it makes me feel old man the dreamcast oh who doesn't remember the dreamcast it was doggone way ahead of its time microsoft matter of fact you guys might not know this and i probably said it already and i can't even remember the guy's name peter moore peter moore actually worked for sega back in the day yes ea's guy peter moore him he was with sega um back in the dreamcast days man and how you know, the Dreamcast was so ahead of its time. I remember their, 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 their hashtag or their catchphrase. It's thinking. That's what it was. And I, I would think sometimes, hey, maybe it is, maybe it ain't. I don't know. C-Man had me tripping a little bit. Okay, you guys might remember that with the microphone and you talk into it and you could teach them words and you tap on the glass and all of that. Crazy stuff, man. Crazy. But outside of that, they had the BMU. Uh, memory card, which actually you could play little mini games on it with an A and B button. It was amazing. You could hook two of them up together and play a game. It was so, so, so ahead of its time. It had the four ports on it for four different controllers. It was such a great, great console. I cannot believe that that came out 17 years ago. Back on now, who can forget that date if you were from that era? Nine nine ninety nine. Oh my goodness! It was so many great games on there, man. Sonic Adventure, Blue Stinger, Blue Stinger was a it was a Resident Evil knockoff. We all knew it was, but like I probably said on this podcast before, it was the first game that I heard the guy say "son of a beep." I had never heard a game go that hard with the language. I was shocked. I was was blown okay i remember i got that game up at a power gamer up at rice's town rice's town plaza here in baltimore it's an import store and i went up there picked up the dreamcast over the summer i imported it i had um what was it some wrestling game or whatever that was japanese based wrestlers or whatever it looked fantastic outside of that jet grind radio on there power stone um Man, it just, just, just so many games that I can't remember. 2K football. Who doesn't remember how doggone awesome 2K football looked on the Dreamcast? That was the first football game. I mean, it, it just put Madden to shame. You hear me? S H A M E. Just shameful. It looked like you were looking at a real presentation of a football NFL game. You hear me, man? It was just amazing. So ahead of its time. So forward thinking. So many excellent games. I would love to get you guys' favorite Dreamcast game from that era. It's just so many we could go through, man. I mean, it had it had such a short lifespan. I thought that the Dreamcast should have stayed around much, much longer than it did. Even the, the tennis game, what was it? The Sega tennis game. I'm forgetting the name of it, but that was incredible. And you guys might not know this about the Dreamcast. It was a thing. You, some of you select few may remember this. It was actually called, they sold it. It was called a Bleem Cast disc and they had it for metal gear solid let me tell you how crazy this was man back in the day let me tell you this disc actually now this is metal gear okay i want to let you guys know this is metal gear on the playstation okay they didn't make metal gear on the dreamcast but they had this thing once again called bleem cast you could take this disc you put the bleem cast disc in and 
It would spin, it would read it. It would say, take it out, and you could actually take a literal PlayStation game, pop it into the Bleemcast, and play Metal Gear Solid on the doggone Dreamcast. Now, this is the catch. This is what blew me away. The visuals on the game actually got better. It looked better on the Dreamcast. So if you want to get technical about it, Dreamcast was the first system that had remasters on it. Look it up, man. I'm telling you. It had it had Metal Gear and it had another PlayStation game because I was up in it wasn't even called GameStop at that time. I think it was called EB Games. Shoot, it might have even been Funko Land, as far as I can remember. But I remember going in there, and I said, man, what the heck is this Bleemcast thing? And I read it, and that's what it was. Just an incredible system, man. Just died way before its time. It was so young. Unfortunately, it was the console that took Sega out of the doggone console race, but... You know, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Moving on to the last story for this week. Now, this is once again for you PC guys. If you bought an NVIDIA GTX 970 between September 1st of 2014 all the way up to August 24th of this year, 2016, you can put in a claim for $30 at a new, which is, um, it's at a, um, newly launched class action litigation site. Now, the reason why they're being sued, NVIDIA that is, is because false advertisement stating that the GTX 970 offered Four gigabytes of VRAM compati um, um, com compatibilities were split between 3.5 gigabytes of VRAM and a slower 0 0.5 gigabyte portion. Now, if you ask me what that means, I don't know. You know, but um, basically, if you bought this card, okay, and you want to get $30 back for false advertisement, because obviously it wasn't hitting the four gigabytes, it was hitting the 3.5, which here we go, another case in point. You know, it, it, it's starting to get very, very doggone hard, man, to say that you're giving something out and it's not true. So, you know, even though it's only for 30 bucks, hey, it's something. You can put it towards a game on Steam where you can buy a game or six games. Steam just has all kind of crazy deals. But the thing is, if you're going to do this and you want your money back, you have to put in a claim before November 30th, 2016. Now, if you want to know what the website is to go over and visit, the website address is www.gtx970settlement.com. Well, that is going to wrap up the gaming news for this week. But don't go anywhere just yet. Because we're going to get into my favorite part, man. Favorite part of the show, which is the feedback section. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. We will be right back after this. Stay tuned, guys. Welcome back to the podcast. Now, I got to let you guys know, man. It's it's been it's been kind of trying to get, you know, these podcasts recorded, man, but that's 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 besides the point. 
besides that, man, I got I got to tell you, I haven't, you know, been very consistent. I'm I'm very 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 sorry about that. Very apologetic, man, because um I truly believe that if you're going to do something and you say you're going to do it, then you should do what you say you're going to do. You know, but sometimes life gets in the way and you can't do what you want to do. But despite that, y'all, I only bring that up to say that despite me not being able to record every week, it's always great to get the feedback from you guys. And I actually got feedback from no other than you you already know, man. You already know. Mr. Mistino Davis. He hit me up as well as Michael. He hit me up as well. And I and I really, really appreciated that, man. Matter of fact, Michael, he hit me up first. He said, um, he said, Hi, Keon. Just wanted to say nice job on your guest spot on Game and Thu. Oh, darn. On Game Enthuse this week. Hopefully you can get Aaron on your show soon to return the favor. Yeah, man, that was that was really, really cool, man. I appreciate that, Michael, too, by the way. Um, that was such a good show, man. Over there at Game Enthuse, I can't say it enough. Those guys, they are really really good guys man they have a really good podcast they really make you feel like you know you get to know them you get to learn about them and you know they tell you about what's going on in their life they don't totally focus on the gaming stuff like i do you know but they well because they got like a dynamic it's three of them and then they'll have a guest and they have a really good conversation going so I really, really appreciate them, and I appreciate Aaron once again for allowing me to have been on the show. It was the first time I had ever been on someone else's podcast. He was gracious enough to let me get on and uh, have a good time with them. And it, it was really, really a pleasure, and it was an honor, man, because I had been listening to those guys for, man, man, two, maybe three years. And when you hear somebody over and over and me being out there on the road, not really having anybody to talk to at 2 a.m. because people got to work and they got lives, you know, I got the podcast. So while I'm listening to them, I'm laughing, you know, hearing them joking. It was like I really got to know them. So by them actually having me on the show, it was really, really when I said it was like a dream come true, it was like a mini dream come true, man, to actually have sat down, even though Tiny wasn't there. I didn't really get to meet him, but I did get a chance to meet Mike and I met Aaron in person. So it was just a really, really good it was just a good vibe and I really enjoyed it, man. Definitely go over there, check them out, check out that episode and uh yeah, just just fantastic guys. Check them out point blank, man. They got a great podcast over there. But um outside of that, and once again, Michael, thank you so much for sending me the email. I appreciate that, man. But um Cody <laughs> Mr. Cody Dog or Clark, this brother. He sent me an email and this was actually interesting. All of his emails are interesting, man. Um, but he says, and this was totally news to me. He said, wow, just saw on Kotaku that Interplay is selling off some of their IPs like Earthworm Jim, MDK, Clay Fighters, and Descent. Granted, None of them have had a decent game in a while. Heck, Free Space was linked to uh, Descent in name only. <laughs> Wonder how that will go. Will the companies that buy them just ruin them or sit on them like some horde of dragon treasure? You know what, Cody? Man, when you sent me this, I forgot all about Interplay, man. Let me tell you. It was Interplay I actually made some really good games. They were decent. Now, out of this list, unfortunately, about the best game on that list, everybody listening that knows will probably agree that Earthworm Jim is about the best one on this list. So, I mean, Clay Fighters, that was a game that I believe came out on the Super Nintendo. It was not at all uh, good at all. Um, MDK, 
that wasn't bad. I never played it. I didn't play it, but I had read something about it years ago, man. I think that was on what PlayStation. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was PlayStation. And um, Descent, I never played that, but I think somebody will pick them up. I mean, you know, what's the um studio that picked up uh Saints Row um Silver something Silver? I forgot the name of them. It's gonna come to me after the podcast is over, but maybe they'll pick them up, you know, and um do something with the IP or you know someone else. I don't think it's gonna be a AAA developer or publisher that's gonna pick them up. Um, I think it's gonna be somebody who's trying to, you know, be an up and comer, you know, trying to get something underneath their belt to hold on to. So, I mean, we'll we'll see though. Very interesting though. I don't know if they're gonna pick up um all four of these or they're just gonna try to piece it out. Like, man, I take Earthworm Jim and MDK. You gotta keep the other two. You know, but we'll see. It's very interesting. And you know, Cody, I, I just really appreciate you actually you know, just sending me emails, even though I haven't, you know, really been doing, you know, the podcast on a regular basis. It's just, it's just appreciated to, you know, get some, get some feedback and to have, you know, you guys always chime in and tune in. It really keeps me going. And I really appreciate that about you guys. And like I say, without anybody chiming in, tuning in and, you know, giving their feedback, honestly, man, it's really not worth doing the podcast if you can't get the feedback, because that's what it's about. It's all about the conversation with me. That's really at the end. That's what it's about, man. So once again, Cody, Michael, thank you guys for, as always, emailing me i once again truly appreciate it from the bottom definitely but um you know that's going to lead us into of course the round table discussion yeah it's just me in here but this is where you guys come in just like cody and michael you know I'm, i gotta ask you guys this man i need you guys to tell me how you feel about this? Now, the question that I want to pose to you guys. Now, if you guys remember, if you guys remember, Microsoft won two months in a row. Hasn't happened this generation. Sony has been kicking their dog on butts the whole generation. But they were able to pull out two months worth of wins. Shockingly. In the summer, no doubt, in the summer, it's nothing out during the summer. You know, I would have thought that they could have probably, possibly been able to have gotten them in the holiday season, but the summer? You got to be kidding me, but I understand what happened. What happened was that price, that Xbox dropped down to $250 and came with 30 games. It came with dog on 32 games in there. You know, it, it dropped down and they were just throwing everything at the kitchen sink. They just threw the dog on tool shed at them. I mean, everything. They were just throwing everything at the consumer. You know, just take it all. You know, it was a burn sale. And because of that, my cousin actually called me up. He called me up and said, man, I'm debating, okay? Should I get this this Xbox One or should I get the PlayStation 4? He said, I'm leaning towards the Xbox One because it's so daggone cheap. You know, I think I'm going to get that. You know, I don't know if I want to pay the extra money for the PS4. And I asked him, I said, well, it really comes down to preference. You know, I got both. You know, some games are exclusive. You can't get on the other. It just depends. And he weighed the weighed the cons and the pros. He was like, man, I'm going to get an Xbox One. That price is just way too cheap. So if he got it, along with another buddy of mine, he got one for his son because he was like, it was so doggone cheap. You know, it, it's all about the price. So people can talk about, and I think this is the problem, is, you know, us people, you know, us small <laughs> the the small majority of people that actually play games we know about the ins and outs we know about one being able to do 1080p one able to do 30 frames versus 900p and you know maybe doing 60 frames you know i kind of 
said that opposite, but y'all know what I'm saying. You know, we, we kind of know what's going on. We know when the games are releasing this, that, and the third, but the majority, the public, they don't know about that stuff. And I, I would even argue to say that I don't even think they care because if that was the case and people worried about quality, everybody wants quality. Don't get me wrong. Everybody wants quality, but it's gaming, you know, most people look at it like, hey, it's a joystick. The game is on the screen. Madden is there. 2K is there on both. I'm going to get the cheaper option. You know, it doesn't really matter about the 1080p and the 60 frames because they're not checking for it, the mass majority of people. So my question to you guys is this. You know, Microsoft, they had the cheaper price tag. They were low. And, and you know, the, the, the argument can be said that what about when they drop the price at the holiday season and they still got beat by Sony? You know, they still got beat. You know, what about that situation? You know, my, 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 my answer to that, man, would be it's a totally different, it's not a totally different, but it's a different machine. It's a different color. It has a different joystick. It has a doggone built in DVD that played Blu-ray. Uh, I said DVD, Blu-ray disc player that plays 4K movies. It's the cheapest 4K player you can buy. Now, I understand that we were talking about the original Xbox One and how that was selling, but I think that what happened is people saw that this new one came out, and they were like, man, it's $300, and it has a 4K Blu-ray player built in. Maybe I need to jump on this, and it's cheaper than the PlayStation 4. It was the cheaper option. People will always go for the cheaper option. So this is my question to you guys. Can Microsoft keep the momentum with them when the PlayStation 4 Pro comes out? Can they keep the momentum? You know, because the PlayStation 4 Pro, that's going to be 400. I get that. I know. I know. But it has the 4K stigma on it and it has the 4K gaming stigma on it versus the xbox one it will be the cheaper option well depending on which one you get if you want the one terabyte that's going to be evenly matched so sony and microsoft are dead locked with the price tags you know it's going to be 300 and 400 for both SKUs of their consoles do you think that microsoft can keep the momentum can they keep it going definitely call into the show let me know email the show you can email the show at the analog circle podcast at gmail.com or if you want to voice your opinion voice it god dog it voice it at 443-261-4607 that my friends is going to definitely shut the show down that's about it man but i truly want to thank you guys for tuning in once again to another episode of the analog circle podcast and with that being said friends y'all already know buddy you guys please please do i'm serious the holidays are coming people are getting crazy they always been crazy but the holidays for some reason when they start sparking up and start simmering, people want to get a little more crazy than usual. But with that being said, you guys take care. Be safe out there. Bye-bye.